Uh, I have here Dussi Pekka Partanen from Wales, and and you did you have anything that you wanted to share us uh, about these remote times that we are living? Is it business as usual for you, or has something changed? Well, I would say that um, you know working in an environment and with technologies that already have been in the cloud and are working in the cloud. This has been actually pretty, you know, even though the, the whole environment has been disrupted, this, this has been pretty exciting times for, for us because it looks like many companies are now considering more and more the cloud trans transformation and how to make services and tools available for people irrespective of where they work and how they work. So. Yes, it's yes. It's so been, you see it much uh, more as an opportunity than. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't like at these times, you know, make too much noise about it. But yeah, it's exactly. Not the worst, uh, for for us. Yeah, but I think that we we pretty much share it all in this conference that it has been something that we have been kind of having to fight a little bit and train a little bit more people to understand that, hey, you can do things remotely, you can do things digitally, and now everybody else is kind of forced to also believe that. So, hey, yeah. but you have done this before. So you have a case study of, of innovating faster with, uh, I guess, your platform. And so can you lead us to that direction, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so we are going to talk a little bit about Wear OS. I'm going to um, show a couple of a talk about a couple of uh, case examples how we work uh, together with uh, with customers. Uh, but let's have a look first at um, you know our vision and what's what's happening in the world. So we as a company we believe uh, that the world is going to change so that the companies who use data and will be able to use the data will be the, the successful one. So if you look at the underlying trends, uh, the world obviously is changing very fast, even now faster than ever. And businesses are more and more getting connected through different kinds of online systems and connected systems to their customers. Customers are getting connected to each other. Supply networks are getting connected to each, each other. And this means uh, that the data that we are collecting from people, from different business operations, from machines, from IoT systems, and so forth, it uh, is growing at exponential rate. All right, and we strongly believe uh, that the companies, like I said, who can use this data will be the ones who can disrupt their business and, and change their business. And we believe that the ones who use the data can create better services for their customers, they can create healthier living, healthier environment for their you know, customers and workforce. They get, can create greener environment, more sustainable services and, and so forth. So in the years to come, like I said, we believe that the ones who are using data and can use that in an efficient way um, are the ones who are going to be the winners and leaders. And in this presentation, we'll talk a little bit more about you know, how and, and what. So how you can actually use the right data in the right way at the right point of time. That's kind of a question that obviously you need to be able to answer. Uh, so we are going to walk through Wear OS, what it is, um, kind of what it is for data scientists, engineers, and developers as a, a developer productivity tool that enables you to innovate faster, reduce cost, and deliver better solutions. But we are also going to talk a little bit about um, kind of how to build ecosystems um, together with your what, what you could, could call kind of a data ecosystem or data supply network. So the same way in the traditional business and industry, you have your partners and you have your component suppliers and so forth. Um, in the area of data, you can also build similar things. So you don't you don't need to work there alone. So uh, here is a recap of these three three things. Uh, the amount of data is exploding. There's a chance for businesses to reinvent themselves, but this why it requires you to increase the R and D clock speed when it comes to comes to data. Um, if I look at the same topic uh, from a, from a little bit different angle, we can already see many companies 
collecting a lot of data and uh, they're building data lakes and maybe even some APIs on, on top of the data. But then quite often when you talk to the business side of the, of the companies, they say, okay, we have all this great data, but what shall we actually do with the data? So where is the business value? Where is the, is the, is the benefit? And uh, many of you have probably heard some people say um, data is the new oil, okay? So whether you believe it or not, you can um, use it as kind of an example that um, at the moment, I believe we are in a stage where many companies are pumping kind of raw oil or raw data from their operations, whether it's from customers, their own business operations, some IoT systems and so forth. So they have all this raw oil and they are working to gather it, the raw data or raw oil into something that are these lakes or systems where you store this data. Uh, but then coming back to this question of the business side, um, uh, we are in a little bit of a situation where, as, again, comparing to the oil uh, business, you would have these oil kind of uh, companies who, who are, are uh, pumping the oil. They would take that in barrels and go to the city center and try to find customers for their raw oil. But the problem is that nobody wants the raw product. They actually want to have those refined into things that they actually need as a part of their everyday business or everyday life. So they might need plastics, they might need diesel, they might need gas and, um, and so forth. So it's, it's not the raw thing that they need, but it's the refined product. And, and what we are going to talk about here is actually how do you increase the clock speed of this refinement process of matching that raw product that you already are extracting that's raw data into something that, um, that delivers business value at the right point of time in the right way for, for your customers, whether they are internal customers or external customers. So these are three different uh, topics I'm going to talk about. Um, Wear OS as a data information innovation platform. So how you um, solve those pain points in order for you to increase the R&D clock speed of taking that data and creating APIs out of it. And then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can actually build on top of the platform different kind of ecosystems where you don't work alone, but you actually uh, increase the innovation through, you know, working together with different data suppliers, talent and technology companies and, and customers. And then I'm drawing some conclusions from, uh, from kind of um, all of this and um, giving some things to think about in the, in the future. So moving to the point number one, um, Wear OS as a, as a data innovation platform. Um, so on the top, you can see uh, many different uh, pain points. And this is again, uh, coming back to that data refinement process. So you are, you have a lot of data, whether it's coming from uh, uh, CRM systems, uh, weather data, social uh, demographic data, sensor data, traffic data, uh, satellite data, uh, whatever your business is, is about. Um, and you need to basically de de deliver that uh, to your uh, users, whether it's through API, APIs, uh, data, or, or uh, dedicated applications. So these are the pain points that relate to that process of taking those raw products and turning them into something that adds, adds uh, business value. So you have issues there like the data comes in a lot of different formats using different protocols and sources. Some of them might be in, in, inside in your own data lake. Some might come from external systems. Some of the data is, is what you could call kind of dirty data, meaning there's uh, broken records, incomplete or unusable data one way or the other. Uh, you have complex tool chains. You might have some system like tools that use Python, some SQL and uh, different algorithms you want to integrate. And it's quite often quite complex to put those and stitch those together. Um, and then next to 24 seven operations in the cloud. Um, uh, this is also where we run into many times that there's been some small initiatives where you've uh, developed some maybe scripts or, or tools 
uh, that you can run on your own laptop, but then uh, when you need to move into actual 24-7 environment in the cloud, they are not always easy to easy to deploy. So how you move, so how you do rapid development, but move it in a in a kind of an easy way and in a sustainable way into the cloud so that it can be offered as, as kind of 24-7. Uh, creating that value. Uh, then we are also seeing uh, very costly development projects. So um, um, the key I think here is that, uh, that in order for you to prove the value for your customer, you need to take that raw data and turn it into those, uh, those uh, you know, APIs and, and so forth. But if that takes two or three uh, months of your time or even six or 12 months of your time before you can actually prove that business value that by taking this data and creating those end products out of it it's too costly it's too slow so it's difficult to keep the customers in, interested if it takes six months before you can actually deliver so um, these kind of costly development projects are also something that that um, um, are, are a pain point and then you have uh, things like poor reusability, so things that you did in the previous project, it's not very easy always to reuse that in your, in your next project. And then like how you expose and the end results, uh, there's certainly, you know, challenges, challenges there as well. So um, what we have, and here's some uh, examples, and in the middle you have a screenshot of our our platform so it's a tool where you have on the left side here some samples uh, like source data sets like on the on the top left you have uh, csv data and on the top um, or like bottom left you have a raw satellite data that has been captured uh, by the satellite and with this i just want to show you that the data comes it might be in your own systems or like in the case of satellite data, it comes from external systems and you need to be able to mix and match process, refine and, and, and create those things that you actually need out of the data. And quite often it's not only one format, that, but it comes from many places in many different formats. So in our tool, you basically make it easy to integrate those data that's coming different formats, different protocols, and create these kind of what we call pipelines to actually mix and match the data together and create, create those, uh, data, uh, those valuable data sets that actually the customers uh, need uh, to, to add value to them. So they take the raw data and turn it something that solves a customer problem one way or the other. And then on the right side, you can see the outputs which can be, for example, APIs. So on the uh, bottom right, you can see a traditional REST API where you basically can just expose the, the results as, for example, JSON format. And in the top right, you have more of a binary API where you can serve, for example, visual information. So all of these can be implemented within the tool. So taking the, the, uh, the data from sources, creating those rules, and then exposing the results um, through APIs to be used in, for example, application development. And uh, the important thing here is that, that uh, in order for you to take that source data and create those APIs, that should happen in a matter of hours or days from the development perspective. So this is about increasing the R&D clock speed it cannot take weeks or even months for you to integrate those data sets and deliver the value for the customers, but you need to be able to iterate this quickly and, and keep up that continuous cycle of understanding better what your, your customers need and then fine tuning your data sources, maybe finding additional data sources and then fine tuning the things like these APIs that you are, you are offering for your customers. And like said, the important part of the point about this is that you need to be do the, be able to do this in a matter of of you know days or hours rather than weeks and 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 months. 
Okay, then we look at the um, ecosystem. So what I just explained to you here is the black box in the bottom. So we have the platform that does what I um, explained previously, meaning taking in the data and creating those valuable outputs. But then that's not alone um, always enough, or, or there's more value that can be added by working together with uh, with uh, kind of the ecosystem partners. So like I said, um, this is about building that uh, data supply network uh, that enables you to kind of use um, external talent, external technology, external data to, to kind of create additional value and make your pro projects more successful. So here's an example, a road cloud, uh, where we have worked um, together with them. So they have data, they actually have a technology where they co collect uh, from uh, commercial vehicles, um, uh, road uh, condition data. So whether it's wet, whether it's slippery, whether it's snow and so forth. And they process that and create a real time view of, of the street network, for example, in Helsinki, in Finland, about what's the, what's the condition there and where there's kind of dangerous uh, spots and, for, for, and so forth. So together with them, we actually work uh, to find some new customers and together with the platform, make it easy for these customers to integrate and, and, and get the value out of, out of the road cloud, cloud data, because again, it can be integrated into the customer systems in a matter of hours or, or, or days instead of weeks and months. Another example, um, uh, which kind of shows a different part or different kind of, uh, um, of ecosystem play is the JC Deco example, where we are working together with them. And in, in here, they actually have existing customers. They have their own technology and, 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 and skills there or talent, uh, but they actually need additional data sources to make the product, re product richer. So here again, together we worked on top of the platform and uh, worked together with them to prove that what kind of data sources, how can we integrate them and how you can create value um, for, your, for your business uh, from, uh, from uh, this data. Uh, and then the third example is, is a company, I can disclose the name, uh, but here we are working in an environment where they actually have data and they have customers, but they need to find new ways of uh, turning that raw data into something that adds value to the customers. And here we are actually following kind of a hackathon um, paradigm where we are opening up that data on top of the platform, the Wear OS platform, and enabling third parties like inviting startups and developers to innovate and invent kind of new things that you could do maybe combine some other technology together with the data, create new value, value for the customers. Um, so here um, are kind of takeaways from, from this. So don't work just alone. So if you are kind of creating an ecosystem or participating in an ecosystem, quite often I see this, what people call network effect. So the sum of the parts starts to kind of accumulate so that, uh, that the value you create through the network is actually increasing faster than you know, individual components are, are, or individual companies alone. So you can kind of start to connect these things together that, okay, what if I would work with this data, with these customers, maybe we can enter some new customer segments and so forth to, to create new kinds of business opportunity. So work with external customers and build your own data ecosystems and network. And we, in the, in the Wear OS tool, we have this kind of an ecosystem tool as well, marketplace where you can build your own partner networks and share, for example, algorithms and data, not always publicly, which you can do as well, but you can also decide that this is my ecosystem and this is where I share my, my data just like in the case of these hackathons that we are only sharing it with the, with the companies who are participating in this, in this hackathon. And then the results will be shared obviously, obviously with you and the potential customers 
that they might comment that okay this looks good maybe you could you know rethink it this way and and, and so forth um, okay uh, this is uh, the last uh, slide um, so drawing up some conclusions so on the left side you can see a normal stack like what what it involves on a very high level so you have that data that raw product that we talked about earlier you have processing logic the way the rules you you kind of uh, manipulate the data in order to expose those apis so that our applications and business applications can be built on on top of them and then on the right side you have the uh, platform and the ecosystem that can you can help you to develop develop these things on the left side so <clears throat> the first uh, takeaway is that um, that instead of just focusing on those small uh, arrows on the left meaning you do innovation by you know manipulating the data in a new way or you know creating new applications on top of the apis um, what i call transient it's something i call kind of transient apis and full stack innovation so this means that you go into the deep in deep into the data you kind of find ways of creating value across all these layers. And again, this requires you to demand very high clock speed from the organization who is doing the development because it cannot be so that you want to implement a new feature for your application and then you are waiting for six months uh, to that API to be available from, from the API team. Uh, and furthermore, maybe they, they need to again wait some months before the data is available from the data team. So you need to demand very high clock speed when it comes to innovation across the full stack, starting from data, processing logic, APIs, and applications. So in other words, you need to be able to take new ideas and process the data in a new way, create a new API that fulfill those needs on the application level in a matter of, of uh, um, hours or days instead of weeks and months and I know it's a, it's a challenging task for for um, many many especially larger corporations uh, but this is the way I can see that that uh, in the successful cases where we work together with companies they really embrace this kind of a full stack uh, full stack uh, view on on how you drive drive innovation and then obviously you need to understand that not everything can change all the time. So when you find those commonalities between the needs from the customers, then you need to start uh, stabilize those APIs into something that you move to towards more towards like a real production uh, systems where you maintain them for, for years for, for the customers. Uh, the second point is uh, about cost reduction with right tools. So it's about boosting your developer productivity and making your go-to-market quicker and, like I said, reducing the cost of the projects. And the third uh, point is about leveraging external innovation. So too many times I see companies working on their own with their own data and somehow being afraid of opening up and partnering up together with other companies to create value. So like the same way you build your normal supply networks or supply chain, you should do the same in the field of, of data and find new business opportunities and connections uh, through, through this kind of an ecosystem, ecosystem work. So to wrap it up, um, just a quote from, um, uh, from one of our customers. Um, and uh, this is actually something which we hear from from uh, many many of our customers and projects is that they've actually you know worked uh, with us and having that full stack view and uh, reducing the, the the cost of the project they can actually see a, a significant increase um, in the productivity of of creating those apis or or then even user interface on top of top of the data So that's it for me. So thank you. It was a really interesting talk and a, a really kind of uh, hot on the spot with, with a lot of 
the companies and organizations in Finland, and I, I believe elsewhere too. I mean, uh, I, I've, I've been dealing with this, we are afraid to open our data, or should we just concentrate on the data issue with a, with a lot of ecosystems right now, from like waterworks to energy. So what would you kind of um, uh, say to these, I, I really loved, for example, this, this supply chain model that you're seeing, but how would you compare the supply chain of the data uh, to a normal supply chain? I mean, like there are similarities, but there are differences. So how do you pick and choose who comes into your ecosystem and how do you kind of synchronize the clock times, so to speak, with all the people involved? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. It's a, it's a really good question. and. Uh, Again, maybe I would start um, like your question about this uh, picking up, you know, new partners and uh, and uh, synchronizing the clock speed and so forth. I would start probably with some new ideas and new business kind of development opportunities. So, uh, if you are, for example, a bank and or insurance company that has a lot of like business critical things, I wouldn't necessarily start on those because then you run into a lot of, you know, complexity around, you know, maintenance and, and operation and things like that. But try to learn and embrace this new new style by something that's maybe outside of your your core so that you, you don't allow those core things to slow you down and trying new things and learning new things. And maybe there you find the ways of implementing these principles in your organization for more towards the kind of the core, uh, your core uh, kind of data elements and API elements as well. I think that that is a very good advice because there's a lot of cases where companies are either drowning with partnership requests or kind of afraid yeah. to do partnering with anybody. And, and I think this is a really good way of like, making an, an ERP for an ecosystem in a way. I mean, like everybody can, can yeah. just visualize the ecosystem at the same time and, and work on the same yeah. data. Really great. Uh, thank you, Jussi Pekka. And it was a pleasure to have you here in the virtual online uh, meeting. But uh, where are you, by the way, physically, if I may ask? Uh, we, I'm at the moment in, in Helsinki, Finland. So you are physically in Helsinki, so am I, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, as, uh, as, lucky as that. I would love to say that I'm where, somewhere more exciting. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just good that some of us are physically actually here, although yeah. in different places. Thank you, bye. All right, thanks.